It's feedback gaming. Welcome back for another super video where we are going to be playing as one of the warlords. This is hotly requested. I assume because people want to do the achievement of conquering all of China as well as taking out the Japanese and you have to do it as a warlord for the achievement. So why not do it as a warlord? A sane man right now, a smart man right now would go for the Guanzi click. A smart man would do that. We're going to make it difficult for ourselves and go for the Zanmai Sanma. Regardless, we're going to play as them. We are going to show off a super video to form a Super Saima, Super Sanma, and we are also going to show off uh, the border conflict mechanic. Another one everyone keeps asking me about how do border conflicts work? How do you take advantage of them? And uh, how do you exploit them? That's right, there will be an exploit in this video. We're going to call it the Unlimited Division Border Conflict Exploit. Yeah. There we go. All right. Zambai Sanma, what have we got? So first look on the states map mode, we have got a lot of awful terrain. Either urban, wasteland, rural. It ain't good for building on. So your first bet is to try and take some land that's either green. That's probably your best bet. That land is the one that has a lot of building slots. Uh, first of all as well, we are going to get radio. And secondly, we are going to get some spicy artillery too. So here we go. This is the Warlord Focus Tree. This is the mini Focus Tree that the Warlords get. That eventually, if you proclaim a rival government, or some of these, I haven't done these two left ones yet, uh, you can get to form the National China Focus Tree, the big fat one. The really, really big one. What we are going to do is form an opposition, do border conflicts, and then eventually proclaim a rival government. To convert all my divisions to horses, we are going to be the Zaimai Sanma Horse Lords. And you do start the game with a Cavalry Genius. Plus 15% extra attack. Plus for motorized. Plus for mechanized too. But it is quite future proofed. One of the really cool advisors that. I think I've said that a few times in a few videos saying that. Just a really good advisor. Okay, we're going to go for partial mobilization. I had to think about that for a second. That is what you do go for. There's a benefit of two things, really. You get in uh, more civilian factories due to the fact that you're using less consumer goods. And two, partial mob also gives you a boost to uh, military factory production of 10%. On civilian production, you get a minus 30% for military factory production. So that will give you, in most cases, one military factory before we start declaring war. Which is going to be useful. So, border conflicts. What are they all about, right? So... A border conflict is where two nations, in this case two Chinese warlords, will fight each other over a small area between two states. And the winner, if it's the attacker, will take that state off the other warlord. If the uh, attacker fails, the defending warlord will get a bunch of bonuses such as political power, army XP, doctrine bonuses, and the uh, attacker will lose 150 political power. It's quite painful really. Yeah. Everything's going pretty smoothly right now. One thing we are going to do is invite that guy, Kai Shik. So what does this event do? Now, if anyone's got an explanation for this, please comment below and explain it to me. Because this is my understanding and I feel like it's a little bit vague. But it's, a ba it's a basically a way to encourage China to form a faction to, to unify against the Japanese threat. The reason why I fire this event is because I want to get China to form the United Front. So therefore, when Japan declares war, China will be stronger. A stronger China means we'll hold against, against the Japanese for longer. And if the Japanese never take out China, that means that we'll be safe. And if the Japanese take out China, they'll start fabricating on us. So we want to make sure China holds out for as long as possible and we can take as much land from China as possible. I don't really understand why I'd say no to this, but I'm going to say yes, and that results in the United Chinese Front forming. Or I hope it does. Yes, it does. There we go. And I haven't joined. Why haven't I joined? Because I have gone for opposition. So one strategy might actually be that if you want to... Uh... I haven't tested this, but if you want to form the United Front early on and be in the United Front, you could do that. So how do border conflicts work? So the way it works is you, you move divisions into the state that's adjacent to the state you want to activate the border conflict with. The downside is if it's a state that borders two other states, it is, it is this randomly roll of the dice which one you get to initiate the border conflict. Probably not a big deal, but it is really, because I mean, you've got to 
kind of pick the state that you want. The, the one we want is the northern one here to create a buffer against Japan. What we ideally want to do is prevent Japan get stomping China. And the best thing to do is to try and narrow the attack line that Japan can push through have to concentrate their forces. That seems to work out more favorably for the Chinese. All right, so what we're going to do is select our three divisions and move them to this tile. And that means that this one will be the one that we can do a border conflict with. Bear with me, guys. I know this is quite difficult to understand. It took me a while to get it as well. But So what we'll do is move this guy here now. And he's here. And now he's connected in. And that means we can launch a border conflict against that state. As you can see, I hover over it now. And there's a border conflict and it highlights that one. Great. Perfect. Yes, we are going to clash with the nationalists. This is the order that I found most effective. Whether you choose to recreate it step by step, exactly how I've done it, it's up to you. From my experience, it's best to go for Shaanxi, then Xinjiang, then China, then Yunnan, then the Guanxi click. That is what I found from my personal experience is the best way of doing it. Now we are going to work towards concentrated industry to try and get extra production, to try and produce as many guns as possible. I have found the planning bonus does make a difference, but you do lose it within four days. So that extra little bit of a bit of an attack boost just go a long freaking way. So I'm going to do a staff office plan because I've got the command power and build all that plan, command power, planning bonus, should I say, all the way up. And that means that we will do a little bit extra damage for at least four days. And then we can launch the border conflict. There we go. So here's the exploit, guys. So border conflicts can only have a maximum of six divisions that enter the border conflict. There are exceptions to that. If you escalate the border conflict, you can expand the combat width. And expanding the combat width means you can squeeze in more divisions. A.K.A. a large amount of divisions into the combat. So, how do you get more divisions, or in this case, the exploit, an unlimited amount of divisions into a border conflict? Easy. So what you basically do is select the divisions that are in a separate army, and then right-click on the actual border conflict themselves. It'll ask you to merge, and as you can see now, click on the border conflict, wait a day, one division in combat, seven in reserve. So every single division now is potentially in this border conflict. And that's the exploit, guys. So now you can basically assign as many divisions as you'd like into a border conflict. There is a big but to this, though. Let me just drop the volume down a little bit. It's a little bit loud. Um, there is a but to this. This not necessarily always is good. It tends to be most effective with border conflicts to add as many divisions to the border conflict that are as powerful as possible. And adding weaker divisions tends to, from my experience, not really help you in the long run. For these first few border conflicts, squeezing in lots of weak divisions tends to be effective because it overall means you more likely to win it in the long run. But from my experience, there are three factors that play into border conflicts. Listen, are you listening? Are you listening, my child? There are three factors that play into border conflicts. Soft attack. Reinforce rate. And the final one, I've gone a blank. Organization. That's the third one. So higher organization just tend to work in your favor. Organization is how long an army will fight for before they break. Uh, improving organization is a little bit tricky, but the easiest way of doing it is to go for your doctrines. As you can see here, plus 10 organization for leg infantry. That's an option for you, and there's other there's ones as well. Of course, you want to go for the, the doctrines that are at the top, for instance. You got 10 plus 10 for leg infantry. That's the third one down. Uh, this one, second one, plus 15 for leg infantry. That's another good one. And I think on this side, you got plus five leg infantry for mass assault. So as it's you, organization, soft attack, and reinforce rate. We are going to go for personal leadership and go for clash with the nationalists. But the way it works is the issue, issue initiate cross border raids allows you to wall allows you to do border conflicts with other warlords. And this one allows you to do border conflicts with the Nationalists, just the big one. And now we're going to work on our Doctrine. Okay. Hmm. We are going to go for Mobile Warfare, because that plus 15 organization on the second uh, Doctrine is very good. Uh, but also we can go for Mobile Infantry, gives extra movement speed for our horses. This is also going to be useful. We are going to do that. I had to think for a second then, because I, I think I have tested this several times. I tested this mass assault. I tested this with superior firepower, and I tested this with mobile warfare. And out of the three, the most effective 
uh, was Mobile Warfare. But there is one thing... Oh, he's fell ill. There is one thing that makes uh, Mass Assault quite good. The plus 2% reinforce rate. Remember what I said? Soft attack, reinforce rate, organization. That can actually be a big factor. You do get that 2% uh, reinforce rate back on elastic defense, but that's quite far down, you know, so just be aware of that. Industrial investment gives one civvy and one military, so you definitely want to do this. That one, Think about it. You've only got two military factories, and then you get a third one. Think about it, that's like a 50% boost in your military factory output. That's huge! So obviously in this case, these two are massive. One thing to know as well about border conflict, just two extra things that's important to know. One, terrain does not matter in border conflicts. Does not matter. So these are mountains, border conflict doesn't make any difference. The, the terrain penalties are ignored. There is one but to this though. Sometimes rivers have the penalty. So I say sometimes because sometimes I've done it and they're attacking, clearly attacking over a river and they've not got the penalty. And then sometimes they attack over a river with a border conflict and they do. I, yet again, from testing, it sometimes is, sometimes isn't. Will she, won't she? I don't know. Also as well, if you win a border conflict, you get your 100 political power back. So you can keep cycling these, uh, these border conflicts. Okay, so this is really nice to know. Once you form China and have their focus tree by going for proclaim rival government, you lose this focus tree. So any of the bonus on this focus tree that you didn't choose to go for, you can't get back. So there's stability. Honestly, hand on heart, stability is useless because in the mainland China focus tree, there's lots of things that boost stability. So that's not really that great. This one is a possibility. Extra 5% construction for military factories and, and factories. I like it, but it's not that great. 10% for all might be optional. I might go for that. But overall, it's only 5%. It's not that great. And plus, you're going to be building a lot of factories because China has a lot of industry anyway when you conquer it. And, and that's pretty much it. So in this case, I'm just going to go for public works, rapid mobilization, rural militias, maybe labor reform. I'll have a little think about that one. The extra 5% uh, factory output is really sweet. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, public works. What we need to do now, and this is really crucially important for this strategy, is to try and split the Japanese and the Chinese in half. And to do that, we're going to position our troops here. And we need to try and take a, this state, Beijing, this one. Or ideally, we could take this one and this one, or this one and this one, to try and split them in half. That way, the Chinese can build up their divisions unaffected by the uh, Japanese landing on top of them. And that way... We are in a better situation to, uh, well, just gobble away at China and then eventually take on the Japanese. They have got proclaimed a rival government. Okay, so there's three choices here. We need to go for three principles of the people and get nationalism, which results in more stability. That's usually a sound choice. Second choice is we can go for uh, reduced consumer goods here. These are good ones too. And third one option is we can go for invite foreign investors and go down the Germany route and get the 10% extra attack guy and also bonuses for tanks. That in saying that, the best one to go for initially is to get the extra research slot. And there we go, the 50% boost for two industries. And as you can see, when this finishes, we'll get the boost here and here. And we can get those like way ahead of time, which is going to be so good. Anyway, the next one we're going to take out is Yunnan again. So we'll move the guys in division here. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like I've got like this. Guys, I have rehearsed this quite a few times to get this just right. Move the capital. I have never seen that before. <gasps> move the capital to Beijing. Oh my goodness. I never even knew that was a thing. Wow. And I really do want to do that because that's got way better supply. Oh, wow. Okay, let's just see how this goes. So if I move this, which is 10 supply, to the capital here, I get 43 supply. <laughs> yeah. Yes! That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Oh, look at all the building slots! Oh! <laughs> okay, actually, we're not going to go for that. We're actually going to go here and here. Uh, wrap around them. Reinforce the attack. Remember, when you reinforce attack from a different angle, from a different tile, you are um, extending the combat width. And when you extend the combat width, that means you are potentially getting more firepower into one tile, which is beneficial in the long run. I'm going to go improve working conditions, and I am going to do Soviet war propaganda. When we declare war, because it's our war and we're the aggressor, 
we will lose some of these war stability and uh, war support. Ah, balls to Ukes. The bombing here is what's slowing us down. Looks like we're winning, but all of a sudden they'll get a jolt of... Uh, there we go, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. What the hell is this? Alright, stop, stop, stop. That's way overextended. That's making me really nervous. Then we go here, and then we uh, try and wedge them from behind too by reinforcing. Extra support weapons, and that makes the gorgeous pocket. Get in there? Yeah, we can. This is where the AI panics. It's like, hang on a second. They're pocketing me. We've managed to mine, managed, managed, finally managed to break out. At this point, they're pretty much already beaten to, you know, Menchuko's dead. At this point, we can just clean up. There you go. Here gone. Clean them up. Oh, and they've the white piece. Okay. Oh, but they've, they've white piece with China. They've not white piece with me. <laughs> Okay, I wonder if you had an Iron Man on right now, that would have re resulted in an achievement. I'm not even certain. I don't even know. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I'm still at war with Japan. So, it looks like under this strategy, you can't get Japan to peace out if you're a warlord. In that case, you're going to have to spam... Uh, my advice is probably spam light cruisers. That would work quite well. And get them extra AA. And that way you can control the, uh, the air with uh, close air support and uh, fighters and AA light cruisers. That's what I would advise you to do. Alright, where do we go next? Do we, uh... You know what? I'm going to use an exploit right now. Oh, uh, you guys are going to hate me for this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the classic surround the capitals strategy. Oh, you guys are going to hate me for this. Ha <laughs> Uh, this is like one of the oldest and cheesiest exploits ever, but I'll do it. What the hell? One of the oldest tricks in the books. Tricks in the books? More than one book. Yes, it is the surround the capital exploit. It is so cheesy. I feel dirty doing it. He surrounded me. Nice. But what the hell? And what it basically does is it, if it's a uh, inland capital, you can surround it and like literally disable the supply for the rest of their nation. Oh my god, this one division is putting up such a fight though. What the hell, guys? Because of air control. Yeah, it is. Oh, 2% left. I can't believe it too. They've basically got no land either. I guess there's victory points here in Dali. The eight still. What the hell? What land do they even own? Oh no! Am I gonna have to invade Taiwan? <laughs> what? Got five victory points. <laughs> Am I gonna have to invade Taiwan? And finally, we are ready. Let us go. A long last, let's do this. Take Taiwan. I never thought I'd ever be doing this in Hoi 4, like invading Taiwan. I can't even believe it. Now we have to grab a port or take one of their victory points. I think we probably can take their port and that's probably a safer bet. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, we've broken them anyway. Never mind. Is that the end of the Chinese? Yeah, we did! <laughs> uh, 
that was so long and drawn out. And there! There it is! Sai bye, Sanma! We did it! Oh! Uh. Okay, I've got to admit, this late game lag is excruciatingly painful. Um, maybe you won't do as bad, who knows. But this is it, boys. This is your Warlord takeover. And at this point, you should be producing a nice bunch of light cruisers so you can invade Japan. And, uh, yeah, apart from that, guys, it's been sweet. Remember to like, subscribe, comment below. Other suggestions, super nations, tutorial guides, exploits. I'll do them just for you. But anyway, this is pretty much it. And also, if you want me to, if you really desperately want me to, I can continue this campaign if you want. I don't know what we do at this point. I'm not certain. With the late game lag, probably not much. But anyway, if you do want that, that's what I'll do for you. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. God bless. Bye-bye.